welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day. I am so excited to sit down and talk to you guys about new releases. It's been a while. It's been like a month since we've done this. So there has been a lot of stuff. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover it all. Probably not because I always like I'm editing and I like miss shit and I'm like that's like a huge launch. But you missed it girl you missed it but i have a feeling this one might be a little bit longer than my other one so if you like a long video this one is definitely for you but before we get into it i do want to thank today's sponsor skillshare skillshare is an online learning community where people can come together to continue their creative journey skillshare offers classes for all different skill levels and they can fit into any schedule whether you're interested in illustration photography film and video crafting finance skillshare's classes are a great way to stay curious and explore new skills skills with thousands of classes and new premium classes launching all the time. There are so many different paths for your curiosity to take you down. A class that I am started, I haven't finished it yet. I'm kind of like taking it slow, little pieces here and there, is a newer one and it is taught or hosted by JVN or Jonathan Van Ness. You probably know him from Queer Eye. He is the one who does like hair and does makeup, but this is a class, let me get the exact name correct. It's the Ultimate Self Care Playbook, Discover and Nurture Your Centered Self. And I've really enjoyed it. I think he's just such a fun personality. There's something about him that's kind of calming and comforting. He's kind of like I don't know, goofy, but still so confident and strong. And I just enjoy his kind of energy. And so taking this class has been really fun and I like the content of it as well. I personally have been doing a lot of just like reflecting and I mean, I feel like I always am about myself and just like trying to be my best self, but in the truest and in the realest way possible where maybe I'm doing harder things that are ways to love myself and whatnot. And I just think his class is, has been nice, little pieces here and there have been just nice reminders. It's almost like a friend and they've been nice little pieces to kind of start a day with or to like catch up on or yeah, recenter myself throughout the day. So if you're looking for a class on Skillshare to take or you want to try that one out, I definitely suggest that one. And for the first thousand people to click the link down below, you will get to try out a month free of Skillshare and you can try out that class. See if you like it. See if you want to try out Skillshare and give it a go. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thank you as always to you guys for your support. I really do truly appreciate it. So let's get in though to the video and the new releases. Well, I was going to look on Instagram at the new releases, but um, it's down. It's down. It's not working. So I guess we won't be doing that today, but I'm going to keep this intro and you'll see me in a new look and we'll just get straight into the launches once it's up. Either that's today, maybe it's tomorrow, I don't know. Yeah, I'll see you then. <laughs> what a weird thing, okay. All right guys, I'm back, I'm chilling. My hair is casual, my eye look is fancy, and Instagram's working again. So let's get into the new launches. I will have a look with this soon. I'm gonna have like a compilation type video with a lot of looks, a lot of new palettes, so stay on the lookout. Anyway, oh, can we actually talk about the new releases, please? Ooh, okay, this is new stuff. Hopefully it's still semi-new once you guys see this video. This is from Kylie Cosmetics, and this is the A Nightmare on Elm Street street collaboration. I think this is interesting. Kylie tends to do packaging and marketing quite well. I will give her that. I mean, this is like a red palette, but still kind of neutral. It's like this weird glam Freddy Krueger moment. <laughs> And I'm really interested to know like how this will be received because I feel like, you know, the people who love Nightmare on Elm Street, love spooky stuff, maybe, maybe, maybe aren't the same people buying Kylie Cosmetics normally. So if you're one of those people, would you buy this collaboration from Kylie? I want to know. I want to know. Looking at the palette, I mean, it looks like the skin, like it's an... <sighs> I don't know. There's a picture of her on the front of this like VHS. It's interesting. Is it actually like a VHS tape? What's in the VHS tape? I want to know what's in the VHS tape. <laughs> Am I missing something? I'm not, maybe the lip trio is in the VHS tape. Maybe that's what it is. But I mean, the palette looks like the theme. I'll give it that. It's still like kind of neutrally though and still kind of glam. Like if there were ever a Nightmare on Elm Street and a Kylie glam collab mix up, mash up, I mean, I do think that this, it does the job. So interesting. I would love to know your thoughts. <laughs> oh man, so funny. Oh, okay. It seems that the holiday sale is coming up. It's going to be November 5th through the 15th and that's that kind of all depends on what level you are at Sephora and whatnot, but 20% off to 10% off, but then 30% off Sephora collection stuff, which they recently just did. So that's kind of interesting. I do have a few things on my list. I'm super into perfumes. <laughs> 
as you guys probably know, I'm just like so annoying about it, but I might pick up a few things like that depending, I don't know. I mean, I wanna snag the best deal anyway, so we'll see what I actually pick up. I'm feeling really satisfied with my makeup at the moment um, and just picking up like one, two pieces here and there. Um, I don't feel like there's any need to like ball out too much at the sale. I'm also kind of keeping my eyes on Black Friday, so we'll see. Speaking of perfume, Killian Perfumes did a collaboration with French Montana, and this, I think it's just their Angel Share perfume, but it's in different like limited edition packaging, so I don't think there's like absolutely any difference to the smell of this perfume. I think this was really popular last year. I think that's when it came out. And the new one this year in this kind of um, alcohol line. What is the line? I don't know like the for sure name of it, but it is like a bunch of different alcohol ones. So there's Angel Share. The one that came out this year or was like a flanker of Apple Brandy was Apple Brandy on Ice. Yeah, there was like a Roses on Ice one. And then I think the other one that came out this year is Lair Vert. I don't know. And that one was supposed to have like notes of like absinthe and stuff in it. So, I mean, I'm interested in trying these. I really want to smell apple brandy on the rocks, but um, I'm not going to pick this one up. <laughs> I don't know. It's $195. I mean, they're not like easy things to just like throw in my car. No big deal. So yeah, but I thought it was interesting. I wish that they had done some type of collaboration that actually changed the scent, but you know, uh, I guess that is what it is. Next are some new launches from Essence. This is a coffee line. So there are tons of different products in here. There's like a uh, coffee lip scrub, highlighter beans, which is kind of a fun thing. I mean, I am not really like interested in picking this up, but the little mini palette's kind of cute. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Huda Naughty palette, I think is what that one is, because it has like kind of a swirly shadow, but then it also has this what looks like little balls in the clear goo, you know, going on. So um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I'm sure it'll be pretty affordable. So hopefully the quality is good for anyone who picks it up, but personally not tempted. Oh my gosh, finally we get some actual holiday releases. I've been sitting here being like, where are the holiday releases? It's already October and I know that seems like but holiday is like December time. But I remember like things dropping, like full on like Too Faced collection it felt like, easily dropping like mid-September. And I kept seeing like some things, some sets, but I was just like, what's going on? But this seems like the stuff from Too Faced. So there's different sets, of course. Um, There's like a hot cocoa thing. There's a pretty little lip gloss. Then these are the palettes. These, are, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it feels so weird, even though I don't want them. If Too Faced didn't come out with these. It looks like the kind of overall theme of this is Christmas in the city. So that's what one of the big palettes is and it has like the blushes in it. Um, kind of light looking, not really my thing, but finally we see it. It's like every year it's the same thing where it's like pastel purple, pastel pink, pastel blue, and some type of, like last year I think it was animals, like you know, like swans and different things, and the year before that, I don't know, it's carousels one year, I don't know. It's always like a pastel Christmas at Too Faced though, <laughs> every time. Anyway, not gonna pick it up, um, you know, I think they have a bit of their place, and like I said, I'd be sad if I didn't see them, like, but I don't want buy them in my collection and I feel like they're not for hardcore collectors they are for like people to give as gifts and I just hope the quality is good for anyone getting them as a gift next this is from Colourpop it seems like they're already launching a big palette I feel like they just did one of these so I really wish they gave the it's a mood palette time to breathe a little bit but this one's called play it jewel and it's jewel toned and this does not strike the magic that the It's a Mood did for me. I don't know why that is. Like, why did the It's a Mood look better? And why does this one tell me no? I'm not sure, but definitely not tempted by this one. I guess I'm a little shocked by how fast this came out. I really am. Even for ColourPop, you know? <laughs> I think one of the difficulties with these large palettes is that it's so many shades and how do you not repeat yourself or look like you're repeating yourself in here? How do you keep a condensed color story or theme going on? And like it's easy when you do a big cool tone palette and a big warm tone palette. You know, it's definitely harder than only picking 12 shades, you know? And ColourPop I feel like already dupes itself because of just the rate they put things out. I don't know. I just think it's more apparent in a bigger color story. So no, I'm not gonna get that. This is a new one 
this is kind of a Halloween collection. I'm kind of happy we're seeing more Halloween collections than we used to in the past. Like I remember always being a little shocked that more brands didn't come out with something for like pumpkins and like fall time like that, but also specifically Halloween. But it seems like that has changed. This is from Makeup Revolution and it's a Simpsons collection. I don't know that much about the Simpsons. <laughs> Honestly, I know, I know. Um, so I don't have any connection to this. I have no idea if it's good or not. You'll have to let me know if you like The Simpsons, what you think of this collection. I feel like you have more authority on it, so let us know. I like the look of the smaller palettes, of course, naturally, um, more than like that big honker of a palette in there, but I'm not gonna pick this up. This Mac Holiday collection is kind of tempting, and I don't know if that's because I bought the last release, the Tempting Fate palette or not, but I believe the palette's called the R eyeshadow palette, and I think it's pretty. It's very neutral, but I have just been feeling so pretty in a neutral like even today I forced myself to do the blue underneath because I was trying to make use of a color story you know but I would have loved to just leave it the purple like that kind of it's still purple but mostly neutral looking on top and keep it really clean on the bottom I would have loved that and that's just what I gravitate to every day so um, I don't know I'm definitely gonna look at reviews that's what I'm trying to say to see if this is something because the textures on these look really good it seems a little light in the mattes that are in here but those shimmer shades I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued enough to go swatchy swatchy or go look in store, you know? It's been so long since I've talked about this. I haven't even covered that ColourPop came out with a Hocus Pocus collection and it's already gone. There's new stuff like no one even it, it goes so fast but ColourPop did come out with another Hocus Pocus collection. If you bought it you probably already have it. You're probably already using it. It. Um, but this is called the witching hour and I don't know if it was because quarantine or what but I was initially excited for that palette um, I didn't buy it and I was a little like oh, it's kind of boring but I mean who doesn't love hocus pocus we all love hocus pocus we just love hocus pocus we all do I mean there's nothing else to say so when there was a second collaboration I was excited to see what they do if we're just looking at the palette you know, mm, not my favorite. I think that it's cool they went with a different theming. They didn't go as black and dark. They did like an orange and purple Halloween theme. And I think that's smart. Do something different than the last one so it can't be too compared. There is some color in here. There are some darker mattes in here. I mean, if you love Hocus Pocus and you love this color story, I hope you got it and you're using it and loving it. But definitely not enough to get me, you know? And that's what I look at for ColourPop. Like, is this one enough? Is this one enough to, to get it? And this one wasn't. Um, I was looking at some of the other things in the collection too, like the Super Shocks and the lip stuff, but even those weren't quite enough for me to buy either. I did check out the site a couple of times though, I'm not gonna lie, went over there, see if it sold out yet. And it took a while, I feel like, for it to sell out, at least the palette itself, if it even did all the way sell out. So I was happy that they seemed to like kind of know what the response could be. I don't know, you'll have to let me know if you ordered how that went for you, but not my favorite. I, you know what I loved? I loved the mirror and I loved that spooky little like <laughs> stamp that was a spider. Like that's what I liked, honestly. <laughs> I thought that was so cute, um, but that wasn't enough for me to order. I was like, Lauren, you do not need a spider stamp. <laughs> Okay, I know it's different. I know you don't have one yet, but you don't need that. And if I did more looks on Instagram, then maybe, but I don't do that shit. So I'm, I don't, yeah. okay, don't buy the stamp, girl. Even though it's cute, you can admit it's cute and you can hope that everyone else who wants that stamp buys it, but don't buy it yourself. I didn't even see this sold right now. Le Labo's coming out with a new fragrance called Te Matcha, and I definitely want to smell it. I love the Le Labo Santal 33. I really love another 13. Sam really likes Te Noir 29. I also love Bergamot 33. <laughs> yeah, Le Labo has some good scents. I really like them. Um, and unfortunately, they just ended their like city scents. Anyway, I'm definitely wanting to smell that. I definitely, definitely want to smell that, see what it's like. Okay, keeping with palettes, we'll keep Keep it to the makeup. I really, I didn't even plan this. They're just in here. <laughs> oh, this was interesting. Oh, Revolution again, coming out with a Matrix collection. I had just recently seen the Matrix. I think maybe I watched it during quarantine. Maybe not the best one <laughs> when you're questioning life. But this one's interesting. It has like, I guess the red pill, blue pill type situation. It's not getting me. I'm sorry, it's not. But these from MAC, more holiday from MAC. I guess those weren't a holiday collection that released earlier that I talked about. I don't know what these are, but these single shadows sure are pretty looking. Um, I don't think I'll pick them up. Like looking at the swatches, they look like these black based 
like duochrome type shadows which are beautiful but I don't use them enough to like buy singles like please and I have singles like that and I don't use them so definitely no need to add those but initially looked cute <laughs> It almost looks like a white stripes collab because of the black and the white and the the red to me you know not gonna pick any of that up i thought this was gonna be more exciting i really did because it's been so long since we've talked but i feel like if you're not on top of it and right there in that moment the excitement dies away so fast and then there's new things and then all that stuff in the middle if you didn't buy it you weren't there it's kind of easy just to like not even really realize it exists and, or care it exists except for like maybe one one shiny beacon out of a thousand you know anyway this is a made by mitchell release the milk <laughs> okay it's the milk palette and it is neutral with like some blues and like a lime green these swatches look really pigmented like whoa <laughs> whoa 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 baby um so if you want pigment this might be your thing i've never tried any of the makeup by mitchell stuff but damn like those swatches <laughs> They're not, they don't look like they're messing around. <laughs> Definitely not, I think, what I'm into right now. Okay, these, I bought two of them. These are from Glam Light, and they're the cocktail-inspired happy hour collection palettes. There's four different ones. So we have the margarita palette, and this one's a little bit more rainbow and colorful. This, I believe, was the last one teased, so all the other ones seemed so much more monochromatic, and then this one came. <laughs> came out which doesn't follow that same thing but I didn't pick this one up I felt like my ice cream dream was close enough to this and I didn't want to buy repeats and I really was making sure I wasn't buying the whole set of these just to like review I was like no I just want the ones that I really want so I didn't pick this one up but it's pretty don't get me wrong I did pick up the chocolate martini one I've been into neutrals I know I love the glam light shimmer formula and I did it I bought it mm -hmm. and I'm excited to get it the wine palette I did didn't pick up it was tempting because of the purples but I really don't wear purples that that often and I also felt like when I was watching some of the promos and people swatching and whatnot some of the purple seemed really similar and I just felt like if I really wanted it I probably could catch it later so um, yeah I, I decided to skip out on that one but then that dirty martini palette that was the first one that I saw and I was like oh the textures on it, the greens in it, there's something still kind of neutral about this olive and that's what I liked about it too. It didn't feel too poppy, but then the one pop that really is in there is that lime green, which I'm a sucker for lime green. So yeah, I picked that one up as well. So as soon as I get those, I will definitely do reviews for you guys. I'm excited. It was one of the things I was like really excited about. So that was nice. It's always a toss up. Like I love being excited about new launches, but it's also nice to not be excited about too much because you know, it is money and sometimes you just don't want to be tempted by freaking and everything okay I'm wearing a really neutral lip color I gotta make sure I stay on not having an inner lip I'm not sure what it's been like for you guys if it's been a little scary looking at it hopefully not hopefully not anyway next this is from tower 28 and this is the tinted sunscreen it seems like there's a really great shade range love to see that there are 14 different shades and i would definitely try this out i've been into something with a little bit more of a natural finish for every day and so yeah i've tried only a couple products from tower 28 their lip glosses are a really great formula but i hate the smell i have the cream blush which i think is nice but i wish it was a little more brown um so i've been like i've tried a few things and not like fallen in love so definitely want to watch reviews probably before I actually purchase this just to make sure I'm not gonna add something to my collection that I move out fast you know oh these I thought were really pretty these are from glowish and they're the cheeky vegan blush powders I love that they're swirled there's something about them that's really cute to me I'd probably pick up that like peachy one but all the colors looked beautiful yeah I love the luminous finish on the bronzer like the actual finish of it maybe not the color so much and so I think it'd be really nice in a blush formula that's definitely on my radar I don't know when I'll pick it up if I will but it's on there it's on their radar these little eyeshadow palettes these monochromatic palettes from glossier are interesting definitely very glossy like if glossier were to do eyeshadows this is the way they do them so I feel like they stuck true to their brand part of me likes these and part of me thinks it's boring but I also know that if I bought these and I really was like on the go or not doing a lot of makeup, I'd probably use the shit out of these and really enjoy them. So yeah, you know, sometimes the most boring looking or unassuming looking makeup is the stuff you actually use every day, day in, day out. And really you bring out the like pops and the color and whatever on special occasions or on the weekends or whatever, you know what I mean? So um, I could see a lot of people getting some use out of those. I mean, I usually do my eyeshadows in about three shadows, two shadows, even one 
one shadow if I can get away with it. So yeah, I think they could have done some darker quads though, just a few. Some more stuff from ColourPop. This is the Orchid You Not. I am not going to lie to you. It took me a very long time to figure out the pun. I was like, Orchid You Not, Orchid You Not. And I think it's, wait, I think it's I Kid You Not. Is that what it is? What is the Orchid You Not? I Kid You Not. I think it's supposed to be I Kid You Not, right? I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty. I, it feels done. I feel like I've seen this before from ColourPop, so I, I mean, it doesn't get me that excited, but for anyone who loves these purpley wine tones, it's a good season for it. If you haven't collected past palettes, maybe you just got into makeup, you don't know those past ones from ColourPop, it might be a nice one for you to pick up. It's not for me. This one is a collaboration with BH Cosmetics and Doja Cat. I was actually excited before this like showed what it was. It looks like holiday. Like it looks like this massive holiday palette. I think because of the greens and kind of red warm tones in it. Something about it is just like, and it's holiday um, from BH. So it, I wanted it more themed. I wanted it more, I feel like Doja Cat does such a good job of like building universes and like her own style and thing. And I just felt like this was a little disappointing to me for what it could have been. I would have loved to see like smaller palettes with more specific themes, maybe based off her music videos. I don't know. I think that would have been so cool. Um, this just wasn't it for me, so I won't be picking that up. This next palette is from Wayne Goss. I think this, yeah, the Tourmaline palette. This looks really pretty. I mean, it looks like a nice little luxury six pan eyeshadow palette. I don't think I will pick this up, but I, I'm not gonna lie, like this type of product is definitely more tempting than it's ever been to me, and definitely more tempting than something super colorful and bright and all that at the moment. So I can appreciate it. Um, I'm not sure if I'll pick it up, but I think it's pretty. I feel like I'm just running through them, so I hope you don't mind. I think like waiting a whole month to do these, I feel like I have so much to catch up on. And I think what that's telling me is I should do these a little bit more often, or at least when there's stuff to talk about, you know? Cause I do feel like a lot has come out, but it's just, I don't know, it's just been going so fast. But it really isn't as exciting catching up on it. <laughs> You know, it's more exciting in the moment when it launches. Anyway, this is from Urban Decay. This looks like some classic Urban Decay stuff. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Game of Thrones stuff they came out with, but really this almost book looking thing with the pop-ups is giving me like, I love New York, Alice in Wonderland, like old stuff. But it doesn't seem like there's a drawer in here. So we're happy about that. I'm glad there's not a little drawer to pull the shadows out of. I think this color story works for the theming. I just don't like it just personally, like those aren't the tones I go for in those colors necessarily. And then the rest are all like neutrals. I think that people who wanna buy this collection because of the Marvel connection will probably enjoy this. And I think it makes sense to have it a little bit more leaning neutral with some fun pops of colors. I think those are supposed to be kind of like the stones maybe. I feel like it sounds like I'm not interested in anything else. Like, I don't know The Simpsons. I don't know The Matrix. I don't know Marvel. But I love movies and shows. I just don't watch that, I guess, as much. I'm not into those as much. But anyway, I think it's okay. We'll see. I just hope the quality is good for whoever buys it. Like, I feel like that's, that's how I feel about everything that I don't want. I'm like, I just hope the quality is good if you do want it. So that way it's it's a good pickup for you. Let's talk about the Pat McGrath Celestial Odyssey palette. I ended up picking this up. I do have a video already with it, like a first impression. So I'll leave that link down below. I know this was a shock for some of you that I picked this up, but I thought it was so pretty. When I saw the colors on it, there was something about this that was colorful, like a little bit more colorful for me, especially as someone who doesn't have every Pat McGrath release that I enjoyed. But I also liked that it still was neutral. Like. It, I liked it and there were so many shimmers in here and I love a shimmer so I picked it up and so far I'm really enjoying it so that was a great one. I also love that the price point on this is cheaper. You're not getting as luxe of packaging but I'm okay with that because I still felt the packaging was nice just not you know this like hardcore lacquered case and there aren't any of those like special shades which I mentioned but I still think for $78 hell yeah and I think I got 10% off right when it launched like that was awesome. So I'm happy with that one. I'm so far really glad I picked that one up. Let's talk about the Cinderella and Sigma collection. I thought this one was really beautiful. I should have a video already doing a kind of like, can I make it better? Because I wasn't expecting to get it, but I did get it in PR. I actually have it right here because that's what my eye look is. <laughs> so video coming soon with it. I liked it a lot. I thought that the color story is really pretty and I, I was just surprised it was Sigma. I think Sigma actually did a really good job. 
I mean, I think my standards are a little lower, honestly. But yeah, I, I liked it. I talked about in my video on it that it's like this fall take on Cinderella and I really appreciated that because it easily could have been like a spring summer take with lots of like pastels and blues and sparkles and like ethereal type colors. There's like a lot of things you could pull from actually from Cinderella, but I think this was a, a nice take. I enjoyed seeing it. Yeah, I don't think I would have picked this palette up. It would have been one I probably like stopped myself from buying and duped out in my collection, but having it in PR, I do think it's a nice one. And you'll have to let me know if you picked it up, what you think of it. What else? Oh, this one. I actually thought this was pretty. And again, I think this just, it goes to show the type of things I'm into. It's like kind of weird right now, but this is the Love for Sale palette from House Labs. And I liked this. Something about this color story was neutral again, but still kind of colorful, but, but there's like colorful shades that still make something wearable and neutral and not too loud. And that's, I'm just craving that. I think it's beautiful. So something about this is really pretty to me. I think this is another one though that I would try to dupe out. I don't know if I need this palette, you know, but I did think it was a pretty one. I liked it. I actually liked that release. Okay, I felt like I was missing some stuff. This is another one that just came out, kind of just came out. This is the ABH Holiday Palette and it's called the Primrose Palette. I really like the eyeshadow portion of this palette. I don't like that there are face products in here. If I'm being honest, I feel like it's a it cheapens the palette to me. I don't know, you have to let me know once again what you guys think about it, but it feels like Instead of like luxe and beautiful, it feels a little QVC. Like they're trying to pack too much value into this palette that I'm like now questioning like, is it really worth it? Like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I just wish the blushes were out of there. Add two more shadows in, just make it an ABH palette. And other than that, I really like the color story. It is neutral, but I think it's still pretty. Something about those tones is really delicious for fall right now. And I can buy into that, but those blushes kill it for me. The blushes in there just kill it. Just come out with blushes on the side. Come out with three, four, five blushes on the side. Even the two blushes on the side. Like do that. You even have more products to sell. I think that would be way better personally. So I won't be picking that one up. <laughs> Ooh, should we leave it off? I think we'll leave it off with this um, because I, ha I don't think I've even talked about this. This is how long it's been. Oh my gosh. So we all knew that Becca was going out of business. They were like September's the end. We're done with business after what? September 30th or whatever the last day of September was. And then lo and behold, right before that, they're like, actually the core products are being moved over to Smashbox. It's like Smashbox loves Becca or Smashbox X Becca or whatever. And so Smashbox is now housing the highlighters and the correctors, like the under eye correctors. It is so weird to me. The most cynical part of me and <laughs> the part of me that doesn't know anything about the back end is like, okay, Smashbox, let's put our own oxygen mask on first before we're saving up for brands. But I don't know if that's how the actual financials look behind that brand. It was interesting. I mean, it's annoying to me that they play up that so many things are leaving and blah, blah. They, they had to have known that these products weren't going to go and that they were gonna move them over to Smashbox a long time ago. But of course they let people buy up, you know, the stock from Becca to buy up the under eye correctors and think that they're never gonna have them. Um, let them buy up all the highlighters. So I'm just annoyed. Like I get it as a business, I guess you wanna sell as much. It's just annoying, it's so, it's just annoying to me. I'm annoyed by it. I hate shit like that, like those types of practices. Just be upfront. If you know that's gonna happen, then just do that. If you know you're gonna like get rid of all the stuff except for the highlighters and under eye corrector, why can't you just say that from the beginning? Oh yeah, because you wanna sell stuff. It makes me happy I didn't buy, you know, backups or anything like that, you know? But it easily could have been that they didn't ever come back too, I guess, you know? But I don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think. I just think it's so weird that they went to Smashbox, I guess. Um, but also I'm like annoyed that of course, of course, in the last minute, they're like, just kidding. I knew something. I kind of had a feeling like something, something had to be there. And of course that was it, but I'm going to leave it here. I'm sure I missed a ton of stuff. So I'm sorry if I did, but I'm going to try to do these a little bit more regularly. I think every two weeks would be better. And that's honestly what I was trying to do, but it just kind of worked out that this didn't happen until now. So um, anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'd love to know any of your thoughts on the new releases, anything that you've picked up in the last month and how it's been for you. If if it's good let me know let me know I also plan on doing like a kits video specifically so that'll be coming soon stay tuned yeah I kind of want to go through see if I think it's a scam or at least a scam for me and see if it's something that I think is a good deal and I thought it'd be fun to go through them together so um, I hope you guys enjoy anyway thank you for being here and other than that I will see you in the next video bye guys